I'm so disappointed. Pretty disappointing maybe putting it lightly. It wasn't awful, but golly, it could have been so much more. Full disclosure, there's a lot of individual moments I loved, but there's a lot that I didn't. The insults to the mythology of Thor remain from Ragnarok, and the humor goes into stupid territory even if I did laugh half of the time. Ragnarok had moments that went too far, but remember to balance itself the majority of the time, and the humor then most of the time work. More of the goofy isn't the right call. If everything is funny, nothing is funny. Ironically, in the latter half of the film, when it chooses to get a little bit more serious, it's much better and it picks up in considerable ways with the drama that it focuses on. But more often than not, a lot of the serious beats is followed by a stupid joke that had me kind of shaking my head. I'm not gonna lie, some of the humor works. Again, it can be extremely subjective. It's just sometimes too much is too much. I also don't like the fact that Characters from previous films are throwaway references that are literally insulting to the characters. I didn't like how Ragnarok threw pretty much everything from the previous Thor films out in the way that it did. I thought that was disrespectful. I really like Ragnarok overall, but I don't like that aspect. And this one just kind of adds fuel to that fire in a way that's really distasteful to the performances and everything that went into making those characters. And I don't like it. Speaking of, there's a certain character that comes back from those movies, uh, more than one actually. And one of them I thought they did really well and that's Natalie Portman, uh, Jane Foster, Thor. Really like how she was handled. I thought her story was in particularly impactful and I appreciate what they did. Way different than what I imagined. The other one I was super excited again, I don't know if it's a spoiler so I'm not gonna say anything, but I was really disappointed at that person's role. I'm okay with Thor becoming a little bit more goofy and humorous. I'm okay with that helps him deal with the pain, makes him entertaining. But they take it so far in this one that it's to the point where he just seems dumb. And Thor is much more than that. In the previous movies, in the Avengers movies, in the source material, it, there's moments where that comes out. And when that comes out, I appreciate it, but often playing things for laughs just because like they can't control themselves. It's, you're gonna hear me beat that horse a lot. Christian Bale is awesome as Gore the God Butcher, but he's underutilized. Every bit of potential here is nearly thrown out the window despite a ballsy finale, status quo paradigm shift that changes everything for Thor. In any scene that Christian Bale is in, maybe because they use them less, it, it's more impactful, but at the same time, I just wanted more of him the whole time. There's two separate scenes with him that actually really, that really made me tear up and hit hard, but it's surrounded by such juvenile attempts at making things funny that it was a struggle to get through at times. But credit where credit is due, I enjoyed myself. Lots of good ideas here. Lots of the time I smiled and laughed or bobbed my head to the awesome soundtrack. But a large portion I sat in silent frustration. It's too much fun at times, and there's too many moments of greatness to be fully negative but there's too much wasted opportunity to truly deliver on what this could have been. It's just kind of meh. And honestly, it's the worst Thor film. The mid credit scene was awesome and it's kind of strange. I was theorizing with my wife after it ended right before the credit scene and said what I thought would happen in the next Thor movie because there will obviously be another one. And exactly what I said was in that credit scene, so called it. Uh, and the end post credit scene I thought was really sweet, maybe unnecessary, but I appreciated it for what it was. So when you leave a theater and you have that positive like ending experience from those mid credit scenes, kind of like Venom Let There Be Carnage, it improves the film overall and like the experience and when you have the like better taste in your mouth at the end of it. Visually, it's pretty striking, especially in the scenes where they go to a certain place and fight gore and uh, there's creatures, there's a lack, of, a lack of color, it's very monochrome. So when there is color in the scene, in the special effects like the lightning and such, it is very striking. I really appreciated that. But the CGI of certain character movements and creatures is really inconsistent. Um, and again, I don't have a great theater in my hometown. The projector was really dim, so a lot of the darkness, I just couldn't see anything or really tell what was going on. But there were several scenes where a lot of the CGI and the action and the like lightning in particular muddied a lot of what was happening and just looked like visual noise exploding on the screen. And it was very hard to discern, very hard to track, very incoherent in how it was directed, which disappointed me because Taka Watiti has done such a good job in Star Wars. He did a great job directing action in Thor Ragnarok and I like him as a creative but 
it seems like his worst impulses were utilized here and he phoned in a lot of his direction and I just don't understand why. Save the one I mentioned, none of the fights are memorable for their choreography or anything like that at all. A lot of the new elements introduced that I was excited for, such as uh, the necro sword that Gore uses to kill the other gods, Zeus himself completely wasted. Anything like that is wasted in this movie. Uh, the necro sword isn't played off as a joke, but where they end up going with it and all the cool history it has, they don't delve into it at all. It's just there. And I really struggle with that because there's so much potential. And I was probably most excited for Zeus and Russell Crowe is a great casting addition for that. With no spoilers, I like the potential set up, but I do not like the execution of what was in this movie. It's again, played for laughs. Uh, played for jokes, really tasteless jokes, especially in that whole section of the movie. It's just not cool, don't like it, and it's hard to take seriously, and it's harder to be excited than I normally would for the future than I would be if it had been played a little bit more straight-laced than it was. You can have fun with these characters in this mythology without turning everything into a farce, and I struggle with that. And I think Taika is better than this. Well, I think Ragnarok really was a step in the right direction for Thor, in making him feel more unique and kind of expanding what the character was capable of and how we understand him and relate to him. I didn't like how it just threw out everything that came before it and certain characters turned into jokes, you know, but it just, again, like I said earlier, remember to balance itself. This one didn't. And I've been debating on my score going back and forth with this. I thought I had settled on it, but I really wanted to sleep on it before I scored it. When you're scoring something and you're not quite sure if you're torn between the feeling really empathetic towards the negatives, but also wanting to defend what's good in the movie, do you do slightly negative or do you do slightly positive? In the end, now that I'm thinking about it, I wanted to give this three stars. I really, I really wanted to. I want to like it more. Maybe it'll improve on future rewatches. But as of right now, I give Thor Love and Thunder two and a half stars out of five. I wanted to love this. I was very excited for it and unfortunately very let down. What did you think about it? Did it work for you? Was it something you wanted? Do you like this, the Thor that we have now? Personally, I'm a fan of his story from Ragnarok through Endgame. Some people do not like that. I was really, really happy with it and excited for the future. And simply put, I just don't think this worked as well as they hoped it would. Oh yeah, and the Guardians of the Galaxy are in this movie. Not much else to say there. You'll see why when you watch it. I do want to stress to you, do not go in thinking this will be the best Marvel movie ever. Do not go in thinking, thinking this will be the worst Marvel movie ever. Go in to make up your own mind. And even though I'm disappointed, I can tell you the stuff that is worthwhile in the film. And then come back here, watch this again, talk about it in the comments, hit subscribe. Even when you don't like a film, always look for the good.